My name is Phil Merlino. And that's my sign, Phil Merlino. I was a teacher in New Jersey at the School for the Deaf when I started in 1974. When I started working there, I became involved in basketball right away. I volunteered, I helped out, I became an assistant coach, and then I moved up and became the head coach there. In 1982-83 season, I had heard from someone that there was an NBA player who was known that he was deaf or he knew sign language. So I asked a lot of people to find out who it was, and it was Mike Glenn. And he had played for the New York Knicks during that time. So I found a game when they were playing against the New Jersey Nets, and I brought my whole team there to watch Mike play. And boy, was that interesting. Before the game, we arrived early, and we went to the, to the floor, and we looked for a person who knew sign language, or, and then we found Mike. He was dressed in his uniform, number 34 for the Knicks. And my players were like, wow, they were excited. They thought he was deaf, but they found out that he was actually, he, he knew sign language because his father had coached, was the coach at the, at the Georgia School for the Deaf, where Mike Glenn was hearing, but he grew up around deaf athletes and deaf, and deaf basketball players. So Mike Glenn, he knew sign language very well, and he invited some of, some of my players on the court to take pictures with him. And boy, oh boy, that was really nice. He talked so nice, he signed nice to the, to the players. And boy, I was very impressed. After that, he was invited to the ESDAA, Eastern Deaf Schools, Eastern Schools for the Deaf Athletic Association basketball tournament. And he went and he had asked people there, he was interested in starting a basketball camp for deaf athletes in that area around New York where he's playing. So the first camp Mike started for the deaf was at the Mill Neck School for the Deaf in Long Island. After that, I continued to bring my players to see Mike at the, at the camp in Long Island, and I went myself. And I continued to go. We had a camp in New Jersey. After the camp at Mill Neck, couldn't do it anymore. So we hosted a camp in New Jersey. After that, we had both a northern camp and a southern camp in Atlanta. I continued to go to Atlanta after the northern camps had stopped. So we continued to bring my players to the Atlanta camp every year. And it's been over 30 years now, and we still go. Well, I'm a teacher now at the Pennsylvania School for the Deaf in Germantown, Philadelphia. So I continue to go to the camp every year in Atlanta. Why I believe Mike Glenn, spirit of love story must be told because Mike Glenn, Mike Glenn has influenced so many, many students, many staff people many coaches, many people who are related to the camp over the years, many years. He continues to have the camp, and the camp is free for the students. They go, they eat three times, four times a day, meals. We have enjoyment activities on Wednesday is a break day. Sometimes we go to Six Flags in Georgia or Stone Mountain Park. We have, we have a picnic. Boy, everyone works hard for the week, and they really, everyone is really influenced by Mike. And people who work around Mike, it's the same thing for them in that 
the social interaction, becoming, we've all become very close every year thereafter because of the camp. We're like one big happy family because we all get together every year. It's a lot of the same people and we work hard and the kids learn a lot about basketball and they work hard and they develop skills and they meet NBA players. So really, it's a great thing. At the end of the week, we have an all-star game and it's a big event in Atlanta. Many people come from the deaf community. They're involved and it's a really wonderful camp. I first met Mike that day on the court in the Meadowlands Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey, where the New Jersey Nets play. Really, ever since, I've been going to his camp with his player, with my players, and it's now I'm, I, I'm working as, in, as an administrator there. One of my most important, memorable events at camp was when one of my players in about 1991, he played on the All-Star team and in the All-Star game. At the end of the game, that player, Vernon Lane, he stole the ball, made a great pass, to, to another player who was, another player, his name was Mark from North Carolina, who made a layup and won the game. And he was a great player at that time. Um, he made uh, that, that team win that game all by himself. It was very exciting. Also the same, during the same camp, he had won the slam slam dunk competition also and it was just I was really enjoyed that time it was really a, it was really a great time with the players he worked hard the team worked hard and we we've been continuing to have fun that was a really fun camp People's lives are constantly changed by Mike Glenn and the camp. The activities, the travel to the camp, the socialization for the kids, part of the camp, that part of the camp, the experiences of traveling, going away from home, for maybe for the first time for some of the players driving or flying. It's always a great experience. A funny thing happened. My life has changed as well because of the camp and that I feel people work together there and we're still in contact with each other. Sometimes things happen, people get sick, people pass away and we see each other again and again. We've been in contact with each other. It really means a lot to me personally. Darla Ray and Film It Productions, when I first uh, began discussing, when we first began discussing making a movie about Mike Glenn, his life, and the camp, the story from Mike growing up with his father coaching at the deaf black school, a black deaf school for the deaf, Mike Glenn learned basketball from the deaf athletes himself, from deaf, actually it was deaf female athletes, and he grew, around, grew up around them, and he would go to the deaf school with his friends or without his friends, and he would play there. And he 
grew up and he worked hard and he practiced and he learned the game there at the school for the deaf. And really, that was like my own children because they kind of grew up in the same situation. My grandchildren now see me involved with basketball and at the Pennsylvania School for the Deaf, and it's the same situation I see. And that Mike, his story and was so important that he influenced so many people. Some of my players have become good family people. They work hard at their jobs. They're not afraid of anything. They travel with their families, their children, the same as they did with me when we went to camp when they were young. They do a good job. They have a great life for themselves. A few specific people like Jimbo McGrail, specific players like Jimbo McGrail, many others, really. Jimbo works for the post office in New Jersey ever since. Um, he left high school. We keep, we keep in contact with each other. We meet at the alumni basketball games at Alumni Day. We meet each other. I go see his his family visit, you know, with events. I see his son play football. We keep in contact. And it's the same kind of thing, the socialization, the relationships with we, that we have with each other at camp, at Mike's camp. I feel that Darla Ray and Film It Productions would be a great, a great production company to do the Mike Glenn story. Why? Because when I first got involved with thinking about, we got involved with thinking about making the movie, we had contact, contacted Darla and we felt right away that she was very, she was very receptive to the idea of, ha of making a movie about the camp and Mike's life. She was very sensitive herself to other disabilities, and I believe that Mike Glenn's story had to be told, and so, so did she. She, through her experiences with former movies, The Goal and Dandy Kids, they were both great films that she had won awards for. And ever since that first discussion, discussion with her about it, we felt that she was very sensitive to the deaf and the deaf community and deaf culture. And we thought that she would do a great job with the movie.